This week, MPP caucus leader Alexander Penyomakin accused the Speaker Alban Bagbin of fostering chaos and undermining democracy for failing to tell members of the opposition caucus to sit in their traditionally designated places in Parliament. Apenyomakin alleged that these actions and the Speaker's non-reconciliatory posturing are tantamount to overseeing chaos spearheaded by the NDC. As the circus in Parliament spirals, we attempt to separate the politics from the legal debacle here on Hot Issues. Here's a recap if you have not been following the action. Speaker Bagwin declared four parliamentary seats vacant. The NPP cuckers and happy about the power imbalance that that ruling could create headed to the Supreme Court. We sided with the applicants to stay the Speaker's decision. Now things have never been the same ever since. The last act was the NPP not turning up to their own request for an emergency sitting, leading Speaker to adjourn indefinitely again. I am Kemeni Amano, and in this episode, we pick apart the events that have characterized the Apex Court and the legislature as we attempt to get to the bottom of this power struggle. My guest is former director of the Ghana School of Law, Kweku Ansa Asare. Counsel, you're welcome to Hot Issues. Thank you. The circus surrounding parliament appears to have spiraled in what we are seeing today, perhaps in a show of power. Do you agree? You see, in parliament, parliament parliamentary language uh, is of the essence. And um, MPs have a way of communicating and uh, conveying their sentiments you know, to the electorate. So they are politicians. And the way the, their constituents will understand them is how they will go about the communication. Uh, for me, it, it is not um, an instance of a show of power as such, uh, but it, it borders on immaturity, inexperience, and a lack of common sense. Mm. On, on whose part? On, on the part of leadership of the house. Okay. Um, when, when the speaker, when the whole controversy started on October 15th, some of us were able to predict what happened today as you know what was most likely to happen now the one side is claiming to be the majority caucus mm -hmm. uh, another side minority caucus or vice versa the speaker took the opportunity to explain how we got there you know because usually the parliament, parliamentary language has not been minority caucus or majority caucus is either the majority or the mind. Once you have a hung parliament, you know, some of these things are bound, you mm. know, to occur. Now, when they do occur, the approach to resolving the issues is what matters, right. not the language. Mm. Like um, the, the unfortunate, you know, language of uh, Afenyo Markin, the Honorable Afenyo Markin, in attacking the speaker, you know, mm. uh, was unparliamentary. Mm -hmm very uncultured, you know, and this is the first time that I'm seeing live an MP attack the Speaker of Parliament using unparliamentary language, using invectives, using assaulting, you know, the Speaker's character and, you know, playing to the gallery. It's unwarranted, it's uncalled for. And uh, I'm glad that the Honorable Afenyo Maki himself re re recognized the need for decency. Now, a majority leader ought not, ought not launch an assault on the Citadel of Parliament 
uh, merely because they disagree with the speaker. When he was addressing the media, the whole world was watching. This is not, you know, the way a leader, the majority leader, should address the right honorable speaker. And I think that um, the, 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 the major, majority leader or minority leader mm -hmm. well, should apologize to the whole nation, not even to the speaker, mm. to the nation. Because what he has done will forever remain a scar on the conscience you know, of the nation. This is the first time. The first time that I'm seeing you know, such an unruly behavior on the part of you know, a majority leader. Mm -hmm. A majority leader carries the whole nation that becomes the conscience you know, of the majority with the people, the representatives. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if there is a matter, you know, a, a burning issue in parliament that requires uh, maturity, the wisdom of the elderly, gray haired people to purchase men's opinion. That is what, you know, ought to be done. Not to, you know, play to the guy by attacking the speaker, calling the speaker all sorts of names and saying that he's wreaking havoc on the nation. No speaker will, you know, wreak havoc on his own nation. What for? You see, now, viewers will recall with the greatest respect. Uh, it was not the, the, the speakers, whether it was a ruling or an opinion or a communication, you know, that uh, sparked of the fire. It was the, the announcement or the pronouncement of the MPP COCO that they will boycott parliament until the final determination of the suit before the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And the suit has not been finally disposed of. And therefore, as far as I'm concerned, you know, they, they, they have said they will not go. Right. So let us wait until the 11th of this month. But they, they, they asked the, you know, the speaker to reconvene parliament. Yes, yeah, it was a laughable, you know, request they made. If you, you see, you say that uh, the, the Supreme Court, you know, has the most say in this matter. I beg to differ. The Supreme Court doesn't have any say, you know, in this political tussle that is going on between the minority. No, you don't think it's a legal tussle? No. No. It's devoid of any constitutional, you know, legality, you know, to send it to the Supreme Court. Ah, well, the Chief Justice ah, thinks otherwise. Uh, she's been able to, you know, find in the Constitution that even Parliament is subject to them. She went that, on to that say not added, even the... That has added to the, the problem. The executive. How so? Yeah, because you see, sometimes uh, in trying to find a solution to a problem, you rather create more problems. The, somebody runs to the Supreme Court. We have an issue in the Supreme Court. Who are the parties in the first place? So the Supreme Court you know, saw one party or recognized one party, Avenue Marking. Who were the other parties? They the, said the, the, the speaker. The speaker. The speaker ought not have been a party. Under the Constitution, under Article 88, Clause 5 of the Constitution, the Attorney General is the nominal defendant. Hmm. And since the Attorney General had not been served, there was no defendant properly before the Supreme Court. And that is why I have kept persistently to say that the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court had not been properly invoked because there was only one party you need to, to tango. There must be two parties before the Supreme Court. Now, where the Constitution specifies a party, the Supreme Court ought to respect that. Where was the Attorney General? He had not been served. So the Attorney General didn't know. Mm. And if the Attorney General had not been served, he was not a party you know, in front of the, of the Supreme Court. But, but he was there, and I think he raised this, you know, at the last year, and he Subsequently. Was there. Subsequently. Subsequently. And that ought, you know, to have preyed on their minds, should have weighed heavily on the, on the judicial conscience and minds of the five justices of the Supreme Court. Mm. You see, now, when they, they exercised 
you know, their discretion and assume jurisdiction, they knew the consequences. Number two, the Honorable Avenger Markey himself has said that he went to the Supreme Court because he thought, he believed that um, a matter had arisen. Mm -hmm. So he, need, he required interpretation. Let us walk ourselves through uh, Article 97, 1 up to H. Ask yourself specific questions. Take 97, 1A. Ask yourself, does it uh, provoke or you know, call for interpretation? No. no. You go to B, no. You go to C, no. You go to D, no. You go to E, no. F, no. G, yes. How? When we are interpreting an act of parliament, it must be consistent, it must be a consistent whole. You don't isolate. So if one up to G or H, make sure that the interpreting, you know, will be wholesome. It will carry all the... Right. Yes, the substructures. Where you take one out of the lot, you miss the point. Mm. And, 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 you know, the, the Chief Justice at this point is missing that point. They did. The whole court. Mm. The whole court. Because, you say, it's the, 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 I brought a copy of mine. The, it, it provide, it's clear. The language is, you know, very, very, very clear. If you look at Article 97. One ninety seven one, he says, is on tenure of office of members. Ninety seven one, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament, shall vacate his seat in parliament, mm -hmm. A, upon a dissolution of parliament. Does it call for any question of interpretation? Well, you know, the uh NPP caucus leader in parliament thinks it does, yeah, and, and that's where? why the matter has gone there. But, but I, 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 I want to no pick. Way. I want to pick up on something that mm. you have said that the chief justice and the panel of justices that have sat on this matter so yeah. far should have noticed that their jurisdiction was invoked incorrectly on sure. the matter. Sure. Sure. Um, we we know that one while the chief justice sat on this issue during the live coverage, she made mention of the fact that the vacation of an MPC is heard by the High Court. The issue of, of whether or not the AG was a party to the case also came up. And whether or not, you know, the Speaker should be a party to the, the case also came up. What I want to find out from you is, um, is the Supreme Court now, in, in your opinion, is the Supreme Court now fearing what could be its own inconsistency if it says that this matter, we were wrong about it? I, I, I won't you know, say that uh, the Supreme Court is uh, fearing or, you know, afraid of anything. I, I would rather put it this way, that, you know, it was overzealous in an attempt to find a solution to a problem, a political problem. And the court cannot resolve. It, it is not the outcome of an election uh -huh. in which they will be closed or vested, you know, with the requisite jurisdiction. This one, it is a communication that has taken place on the floor of parliament. When that happens, it is something within parliament. And if it is within parliament, the long arm of the judiciary does not reach there. Mm, that see. is what we, we refer to as the political question. So since the to four and attorney general case, 1970, that has been the law that if it is a political question, please just, you know, fold, you know, your arms and ask them to go back mm. and resolve the matter. But I see. I mean, so, so will it then be your um, position, perhaps even admonition to the Supreme Court, uh, that when they finally decide to give a ruling on the substantive matter before them, it should be one that unites Parliament, 
the whole nation. Ask, ask, ask them to the take it away. The whole nation, not only parliament, not even parliament, the whole nation. But you see, my sister, let's look at it, you know, from another perspective. The majority leader rushes to parliament. Mm -hmm. The minority is not there. The attorney general is not there. Then the applicant himself says, Supreme Court, please, there's you know, a burning charcoal. We, want, you know, we don't know how to handle it, so you help us. So we need uh, your assistance. Give us 10 days. We'll go back and sort out. You say no. The key word there in our law is shall, that where one party is absent, then if the court is minded to give a remedy in the interim, it shall not be for more than 10 days. The Supreme Court ought to have recognized this. It shouldn't be for, now it was indefinitely. It means finally, you know, they have made a pronouncement. So when they go on the 11th, what judgment are they going to give? They pronounce upon it already. I mean, it would also be an opportunity if indeed the Supreme Court has made a mistake, as you're saying, to undo the wrongs that they have done. Oh, in Ghana? No, 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 no. It won't happen. It won't happen. Why so? You see, the moment, the moment the whole nation descended on the Supreme Court, the next opportunity they had, if a court makes a mistake, it has an inherent power to correct that mistake. So it would have taken advantage to say that all of you are here. Now we made the order, you know, on the spur of the moment, we thought, you know, it was the wisest thing to do. But we now realize that we rather added to, you know, the problem. So we are vacating the order and urging leadership of the house to go back and, you know, find an amicable solution. Mm. That should have been the approach. Right. Now the Supreme Court has become you know, they are in the center mm. of the controversy. So the speaker says this, now the majority leader has come to attack the speaker publicly. Now having attacked the speaker, how is he hoping to go back to the same speaker he has attached to say, you know, that let's go and talk. The speaker will also attack him. That is why on the 18th, when I spoke on this issue, I said it was likely to create a situation of constitutional lawlessness in the country. And that is what we and are seeing. And that is exactly what we are seeing. Yes. Um, the, the speaker is worried about the precedence this could set. And, you know, he, he talks, perhaps not talk directly about it, but he, he, he's worried about what appears to be a collusion between the judiciary and the executive what do you think yeah, that, about that would be an unfortunate word you know uh, or expression so to speak i don't think that the judiciary will collude you know with the executive i mean that that will that will suggest that you know they are in bed the judiciary you know is in bed with the executive i don't think that is what is happening what I, I believe has happened is that over the years, the, particularly the, the incumbent president has abused his position, his appointing powers under the constitution. He's abused it. How so? He's abused it by, he's a lawyer. The president is a lawyer. And the president knows as a lawyer that the legal profession, seniority, is the key word. Seniority is the key word. And he has been an attorney general before. He's been involved, you know, he's been president of the regional, you know, bar. He's been involved in processes of, you know, uh, appointing justices, you know, to the superior courts and other things. And he knows that I mean, under the constitution, under Article 144, uh, clause 6, if a vacancy occurs, there's a way, you know, that it must be filled. Uh -huh. Now, over the years, what, you know, uh, the president, the current president has done, and I, I believe Muhammad also did it, 
uh, Rollins did it. Kufu also did it. The only exception is, in the case of Kufu, when he recommended a justice, you know, to fill the vacancy, because I happened, you know, uh, to be that person's friend, Justice Reed said, please, I mean, you serve the nation better, and it will be in the national interest if Aban were to continue. Mm -hmm. So he left it. Now, when Pega was sidestepped and his attention was drawn to the constitutional provision, he respected it. But currently, the present you know, uh, situation is this. A vacancy occurs, and then the seniors are bypassed. Younger ones are appointed. When that happens, if I am a, a, a young justice, mm -hmm. you know, um, of the Superior Court, and somebody far, 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 my senior has been mm -hmm. bypassed, when I get a nod, I will not work, you know, with my seniors. So I'll try to work with those who will be loyal to me. So this blind adherence mm. to, you know, uh, sidestepping the constitutional processes right. and, you know, going to the bottom to pick, you know, from the layer, that is what is that, worrying I mean, us so, now. Are you then saying that it creates a, an environment of justices, the chief justice, uh, feeling indebted to the sure, executive. Sure, that's the word. Correct, yes. Forever and ever, I mm. mean. And they will tend to do things that, that appeal to the executive. Or appeal to the executive. Or let's say to the president. Mm. And, and I, I think that the time has come for some of us to give notice to wh whoever will be elected as the next president we are not going to sit idly by and watch them, you know, sacrifice the constitution to the dogs. Mm. We will not allow them to do that any longer. We have allowed Nanado, you know, far too many chances. I see. And so, so, so I mean, so do you it. then see how the current constitution of the Supreme Court, uh, and, and particularly, you know, those who are sitting on this case right now, there are those who feel that they have put themselves in the position for people to draw the conclusion that you're doing this in tandem with the, with the executive? I'll not say all five of them. I'll single out the Chief Justice. Her body language on that day, her body language was, you know, it was so, so what? I found that to be quite unfortunate, unsavory. Mm. Maybe um, she was being assertive, you know. She needed to keep oh, you can, you a can, stern. On the bench, we have the timorous souls and the bold spirits. You can be a bold spirit, you know, without uh, manifesting you know, that exuberance and, you know, emotional, you know, breakdown and, and, and those. Are. If, 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 if your, our loyalty and commitment must be to the Constitution, not to the President. And you think if that loyalty was to the Constitution, we won't see the debacle we, we, that we, we saw? Mm. No. And that is, that is why a former Chief Justice uh, her leadership, you know, Sophia Kufu, could say that we've been there before. We've seen it all. But this one, when we compare it with the previous one, this current crop of justices of the Supreme Court and the entire Supreme Court is all too predicting, all too predictable. The moment, okay, so after your mountain, why did he rush in the first place to the Supreme Court? So the, the, the point is that the, all of us, all of us must endeavor, you know, to uh, fight to protect and safeguard the Constitution. Mm. If the Constitution says that until, until a suitable person is found, the most senior must, any, any good leader 
should read that to mean the most senior must fill the vacancy. So if the, the words until provision is made, mm -hmm. until a suitable person, if that is what is causing the problem, let us remove those words. Let us amend the constitution, remove those words, and simply say that when a vacancy falls, mm -hmm. the most senior justice of the Supreme Court shall... I see. I That's mean, all. Uh, very well. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll look into other issues. Don't go away. While we're on the subject of reviewing the constitution, perhaps we could also look at 97. Um, because the, the bigger picture then is, if you look at people who talk about the history of why that was included to prevent cross capitalism, then also we, are, we seem to be um, discouraging independent minds in, in parliament. Perhaps we should review that as well so that people can feel free and, and be with whichever group they plan to be with. That's what, the what more reason why that? it should not be reviewed. Because in the wisdom of the framers of the constitution, cross carpeting should be discouraged. Why not? Why, why so? Why, why should I be punished? Because I no longer want to, uh, you know, align yeah, with, with because the party you A. Knew. When, you, when you were seeking power, you thought, you thought that, you know, you could use a certain political structure as a springboard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now that, you know, you have the thing on your lap, you say, well, you know, um, uh, I, I made a, I, I think I made a mistake, so I want to defect, or I want to go back to this. So D does it not stifle independent thinking in that you are now expected to think alongside the party that brought you into, into parliament all the time? It is not, in, it is not stifling you know, your independence. Well, all that it is saying is, please, be loyal to your constituents. Be loyal to, but not know, the political party that brought to you. The there. party so, to your so, so the, point, the point I'm making your, is that you yes. can still serve your constituents because your constituents are not only made up of party A. If we got rid of that, then a, you know a member of parliament of party A who no longer thinks that party A is seven his or her people will now choose to be an independent member of the house or be with party B because party B's ideologies and beliefs in parliament will serve his or her people. Do you know why some vote um, skirt and blouse? Because they don't like this person, but they like, you know, the other one. And therefore, I don't like you, I won't vote for you. I like him, I'll vote for him. Now, in the wisdom of the framers of the 1992 constitution, he said, look, in order to discourage disloyalty, absenteeism, defection, crossing of carpet, whatever, whatever, once you enter, make sure that the four-year lifespan, you commit and dedicate yourself, your soul, your mind, your body, your spirit, to it until after the expiration of... Now, mm. if for any reason, because you see under... Under Article uh, 1125, the point is, the 1125, the point is that 30 days, you know, to elections, there can't be any, you know, general election, so no by election, mm -hmm. economic factor, you see. So 1126, because of that, if what you just said occurs, the constitution says that you shall have vacated your seat. It is not the speaker. It is not the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has nothing you know, to it's do with it. It's already stated. Yes. It's all, it, it, is the NPP caucus leader leading his caucus astray? I, I, from the letter I saw you know, of his um, you know, encounter with the media, I think he's been overwhelmed, you know, with um, emotions and uh, frustration. He believes that it is the right honorable speaker, you know, who is uh, causing, you know, problems for him. But I think that <laughs> on this occasion, it is the, the MPP caucus that is, you know, shooting itself wrongly in the foot. 
you know, you walk out, you tell the whole nation you boycott until the final determination of the case, and the case has not been finally determined. Don't blame anybody. Mm. Blame yourself. It was not uh, Honorable Bagbin who led them to boycott. He had nothing to do with it. They themselves said, so they made their bed. Let them lie in it until after the 11th, and mm. then we see what well, happens. Well, they, they plan to meet uh, a speaker after the news conference to discuss the issue further. Uh, how do you think that could go? Hmm. Speaking as a Ghanaian, I think the speaker will be very angry with them in the first place. And uh, that is where maybe your description of the show of power, you know, comes in. Now you have, you have humiliated me, you vilified me, you know, in full glare of the public. What do you want from me again? Are you going to undo what you did? Mm. So you go and apologize publicly and then you can come back and watch it. What if the speaker, you know, turns around to say that I'm going to the court. I'm suing you for some of the words that, you know, you use. Now, we don't even know the forum where, you know, the encounter took place. If it is parliament, you know, you have immunity. Mm -hmm. But if it is outside parliament, then that's a, another matter. So my, my take on the matter, you know, my appeal to the right honorable speaker will be, you know, to, you know, to show maturity, mm. accept them. If they, they are coming back, you should accept them. It's like, um, you know, the, the biblical sheep that, you know, went you know, to the wilderness. And if they are coming back, mm. let them. One, thing, one thing we know for sure, the, uh, you know, the NPP caucus plans to do is to cite the speaker uh, for contempt. Under what circumstances could they do that? Contempt, general contempt of parliament, you know, privileges come under Article 122. They have, you know, that power. But if the speaker is, uh, you know, uh, performing his constitutional role, under what, you know, circumstances can you cite him for, you know? F well, for not ensuring that the status quo is reversed. The status quo of they being the majority side is reversed. Yeah, but, but, but uh, the, the uh, caucus leader himself conceded. He said, you know, the speaker... So they went to check, to verify from the clerk, and the clerk, you know, confirmed, yes, I've been directed to do it, I did it. And um, how does the, the, the majority caucus leader know that the speaker endorsed the unruly behavior, if I may put it that way, of, you know, the, the few, you know, miscreants who did it? Because he didn't ask the NDC caucus to move to his left side. The people's grandfathers and grandmothers and uncles and fathers, how could, was he expecting, you know, the speaker to go there and say, schoolboys, you know, if you are okay, you or not. No, it is up to the leadership of the house. It is not, you know, the, that's what the speaker is a neutral person. He must always show neutrality. I want to draw you back into the conversation around the, the case at the Supreme Court now. Uh, when the uh, Supreme Court granted the injunction. Uh, I think ex the, the ex parte, the ex parte um, yeah. application. The its reason, the backbone of its reason, was because they thought that the people in the constit constituencies involved should not be deprived of their representation. Now, when you compare the Supreme Court's reason for its action. To what we see today, and you know, a an NPP caucus that will not sit in parliament, but only wants to be crowned majority before it goes there. Do you get the sense that perhaps this was not because of representation from the very beginning? It was because leadership didn't want to lose their slot in parliament. Sure. Sure, but that is the that, that's the more reason why. Uh, the Supreme Court should have been much more circumspect in, in you know, uh, trying to handle the matter. Um, uh, maybe, just maybe, what has happened, you know, might be a useful lesson to the entire nation. And next time, uh, we should reflect. We should do some, you know, self introspection before we take on certain tasks, you know, that uh, we, we, we think we, we should do. 
the, the majority caucus is not demonstrating uh, disciplined leadership. That is the bane mm. of, the, of the MPP now. You know, leaders have come and gone. And the current leadership. Well, but the, of the, 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 the NDC caucus could also decide that we won't sit here post the Supreme Court ruling. We would go to the uh, to the left side where where they usually sit. Why haven't they also done that? It yeah, but you see, the, the, this is why I'm saying that it is for the leadership. This is not a matter, you know, that should engage the entire you know attention and time of the no, nation so I, I mean that is you curious see, as well isn't yes it? The, the 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 ndc minority is not you know also behaving you know properly it is misbehaving just as much as the mpp caucus is misbehaving but if their leadership if the leadership of the two uh, caucuses were disciplined and uh, up to scratch. This thing won't happen. I mean, I, when J.H. Mensah uh, was majority leader, senior minister, there were many more, you know, problems, mm. bigger problems than what we are seeing today. He managed it well. Yeah. When uh, um, uh, the uh, what is his name? The Swedru, mm. Swedru, Achim Swedru, Real. MPP. See, he also handled it. Why is it that this time around, both, you know, caucuses are unable? If you listen to what uh, Kennedy Japan said, it, it, it shows, you know, it gives room for, you know, some comfort. He said, look, what has happened, instead of attacking the speaker, we should have apologized because the speaker was not aware. Well, but, but he's one of the uh, mature or experienced uh, legislators. He stood behind the uh, caucus leader when he was making those comments. He didn't differentiate at that point. But if you, if you look at the body language, after they had finished, you know, he also you know, spoke. So what I've just said, you know, is taken from you know, the remarks. That but that, but that also means that the uh, mature heads that you expect to be involved in this are also just looking on in Parliament. But he said, you, you, you heard him say that, I mean, he's not, you know, in the leadership now. He made it quite plain. So it means, it means some internal infighting. Because if the person said, well, you know, this is what we should have done. But someone who said, me, I'm not part of the leadership. So it speaks volume. That's what it tells you. Yes. That's what it tells you. I, I, I want to, you know, pick, piggyback of something uh, the speaker said during his own news conference. He says, look, what I said was not a ruling. It was just a communication to the House. Um, the Supreme Court during his first hearing considered that a ruling. The Chief Justice goes on to say why she thought that was a ruling uh, on the floor of Parliament. The speaker's explanation now, how does that change the dynamic of the case if he said he, it wasn't a ruling? Well, uh, I think he's been consistent in you know, uh, telling the nation that what he did was just to communicate. Mm -hmm. The Constitution says that if a vacancy does occur, you know, as a result of the instances, you know, circumstances yeah. outlined in the constitution, then the clerk of parliament shall notify the electoral commission, the clerk of parliament. And once the clerk of parliament notifies the EC, then the EC will in turn, you know, uh, engage the, the speaker. And that is what, you know, happened. So, so if you look at the uh black and white writing of 90 article 97 mm -hmm. you know um one a and the vacancy declarations it's quite clear that it is the constitution that has already decided right. so, so, so if, the constitution. If, if the speaker now says that what i said in parliament is not a ruling it's communication how does that change the stature of the case that the supreme court is looking at now
it won't affect it really because whether it is an opinion or a communication, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it is neither here nor there. The constitution says that shall vacate. So it is not the speaker. The speaker doesn't have to make any ruling. The speaker doesn't have to express any opinion. It is the constitution that says if you defect, you shall be deemed to have vacated your seat. Period. And a communication to that effect has been made. Whether it is an opinion, if it's an opinion, it's incapable of proof. In law, an opinion is not capable of proof. So if the, 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 the speaker, you know, now says that it was an opinion, that he, then he's telling the whole nation that, as for me, what I said was in line or in tune with the constitution. Mm. But again, you know, that, that, that to be, you know, uh, be playing around, you know, the main issue. What did he do? He should be bold to tell the nation what he did. Now, if he says that, you know, it was not a communication, but the constitution says he shall communicate. So what he did amounted, you know, to a communication, period. Now, the question is, will it, how do we come out of this mess? One or two things. The Supreme Court can vacate uh -huh. the, the matter the decision he made mm -hmm. on the 11th. But I am not the Supreme Court. So what they are going to do, I cannot go there. I can only speak to what they've done. That if I were you know, the Supreme Court and see what is happening, you know, in order to bring the two this, uh, advocates and then let us find a consensus building now involving the council of state parliament the you know as for the judiciary because to go back to them again we can leave them out but in you know in seeking or trying to you know find a consensus building i think the the chairman of council of state and the previous chief justices and this thing can you know act responsibly well i think they in have been involved i know that the council of state has met uh, the speaker uh, the peace council as well has met with with the speaker and so they they are acting yeah but but as uh, if you look at the composition of the council of state now i don't think that because you know i see the council of state now as an mpp wing if an ndc you know president you know, is in power the Council of State members will be NDC. Let us face facts and tell the, you know, the truth. If you look at the composition of the Council of State, they are all nominees of the president. And the president is MPP. So what is the irresistible conclusion? MPP. So if I'm a speaker mm -hmm. and you know, my, my bedfellows you know, are the NDC people, like Afeño you know, Markin said, I'll you know, try to also, you know, uh, play softly, softly, softly into, you know, the NDC. But, but, the speaker, the current speaker, has demonstrated that he is very neutral and objective. All he's seeking to do is to build a very strong parliament as one of the institutions of governance. So, as far as he's concerned, it's neither NDC nor MPP. You know, so far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah. We know that the Attorney General had is raised issue about the lawfulness of the Speaker being represented by a, a private practitioner or, or, of the law. Um, the law, as we have read it, is also clear that in the issue that... Uh, this, the Attorney General and, and the Speaker of Parliament are not on the same page, then the Speaker is allowed to look for uh, outside counsel. Well, well, if you look at uh, <clears throat> Article 88.5 of the Constitution, the Attorney General is the nominal defendant. Uh, in such um, uh, politically charged you know, uh, legal controversies, I, I don't think it would be very wise, mm. you know, for the, attorney, for, for, for the Attorney General to represent the Speaker. So I think, again, you know, here we'll, we'll, we'll find the uh, solace in Homer to say that uh, Homer has nodded a little. The framers of the Constitution did not anticipate, 
you know, this kind of situation like occurred, and therefore they not provide for uh, it. So the, the speaker will be right in, you know, engaging counsel, you know, of his own job. Because if you look at but, uh, but article... But Public Pro Procurement Authority has decided not to pay for it. They rejected the, the speaker's um, request to pay, uh, you know, the private pra practitioner for his services. Yeah, but if you look, if, I mean, they, they, will, they will be right in so doing, but they will, they will be wrong in also, you know, refusing to pay because under Article 19, you know, of the Constitution, you are entitled to counsel of your own choice, whether it is a criminal matter or a civil matter, because Article 19, uh, Clause uh, 2C or so, mm. says so, counsel of so, your own sounds choice. Sounds like another but, tricky spot for us yes, to take a Article look at. The same Article 19, Clause 13, deals with civil matters. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I mean, since um, it is one constitution, you know, that is serving the, the entire nation, if I have a criminal matter and I'm entitled to counsel of my own choice, you know, then if I have a civil matter, and that is why we have legal aid, if I, I find I'm indigent, right. yes, it can be paid for. Mm. So yes and no. I see. Uh, we'll see how this plays out in the coming days. A lot more to talk about. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll look at those issues that are of utmost importance to this discussion. Don't go away. While we are on the subject of the judiciary, I don't know if you have seen the recent Afrobarometer, which suggests that people have lost trust in the judiciary. Are you surprised? I'm not surprised at all. I'm not surprised at all. That is why I have, um, you know, uh, taken upon myself now to join, you know, people like Martin ABK Amidu to speak our minds. You know, everybody is, is trying to blame you know, the judiciary for one reason or other. And I think that, like uh, Martin Amidu, you know, said, rightly pointed out, they have, you know, called their shots, you know, to themselves. They, 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 are, they have become not only all too predictable, but they, they, they tend to lean towards the MPP. Mm. We have to say it. Whatever whatever the MPP takes to court, the MPP must win. It, ha it has to stop. I mean, but is that the it only... Has to stop. Is that the only basis for the over, over 2,000 people who were surveyed to, to, to think that the judiciary is corrupt? Perception, they see it. Mm. It's no longer a perception, it's a reality. Well, but they've got to be more than that the, you, to, to, to the, to, you know, to the, yeah, to the average you, mind to think that the judiciary is corrupt. They see what is going on. Mm. The average man sees what is going on. The man on the Medina Trotro sees what is going on. So if I speak, Martina Midu is speaking, Samuel Kujeto, people ask, the average man takes something from a cue from what we say. And, you know, if, and, and, and mind you, the average man who is indigent, an indigent, when the average man has a case, where does the average man go? Is it not their court? Indeed. Do we know what they do there? So whether, whether the perception but, 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 of but we, we, corruption... We, we, have, we have done our best. There have been a lot, especially since 2012, we've seen a lot of, you know, efforts put into renewing the image of the judiciary. So if in 2024 we still say uh, that the um, judiciary is perceived to be corrupt and at a very high uh, you know, number of respondents say that, uh, that's disturbing. Blame the president. The current president? Blame Nana Gufuado. Uneasy lies the head. Blame him. If if the appointments lack transparency, the perception over there is that the appointing authority has compromised itself in the appointment. Don't let us blame, you know, the, 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 the personalities in this drama. Uh -huh. Blame the president. If, if he's, he, I mean, he has, not if, he has abused the powers vested in him 
And the abuse of incumbency is the price that we are paying now. It is not, you know, they're paying lip service to rule of law. Then it means that, you know, you are safeguarding or you are a president who respects rule of law. Your deeds, by thy deeds, that shall be known. What then must the Ghanaian people be demanding of? Accountability. Accountability. When the president nominates, I expected the uh, parliament to have refused some of the, the appointees. Mm. But again, again, you know, so we are crying over, you know, Phil Berg. Parliament tomorrow, if I'm going on to 73, if I'm nominated, and I know I'll never be nominated anyway, but if I'm nominated and I go to Parliament at my age, I'll be vetted and they'll pass and me they'll pass and you. I'll become the TJ. So we are all involved. But we have a really large and powerful association as the Ghana Bar Association. Ghana uh, Bar. Uh, yes. Shouldn't... You, Ghana Bar. They, they should be really involved. Ghana Bar Association, the Legal Council, they should all be involved the in, Ghana Bar, in, the Ghana in strengthening Bar Association, the legal you know, environment of this country. The Ghana Bar Association, with the greatest respect, is slavishly cotoing to the corridors of the judiciary. Anything the chief justice does is good. It's like animal farm. It's like animal farm. Or 1984. So until, you see, if you have a very, a very strong bar, you have a strong judiciary. So now, what is going on is a reflection mm -hmm. of the fact that we have a very weak bar and therefore a very weak judiciary mm. until we stop our blind adherence and loyalty to chief justice. Therefore, the chief justice becomes a demigod, attorney general. Therefore, the attorney general becomes a demigod, speaker. Therefore, the speaker becomes a demigod. We should, we should... We should have our lawyer put all our loyalty into the Constitution, not to human beings. Right. I've said it, you know, and I'll say it again. Mm. All of us are not above the law. We are subject to the law. Whether you are a president or chief justice Including or the speaker Supreme Court. or attorney general, we are all subject to one law. There are no two laws. So this, you know, uh, the culture we are building of, you become a minister of social and so, you know, you are approachable, or unapproachable, you are untouchable, you are this, you are, you should stop. Just before we round up, the threat to cite the speaker for contempt, is it just hot air? Oh, it's hot air. Hot air. I dare them. It's all there. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Kweku Ansasari is former director of the Ghana School of Law. We've discussed the judiciary, the Supreme Court versus Parliament, and the conduct of the leadership of Parliament at this point. Watch this again on Facebook and on YouTube. I'll see you same time next week. This is Hot Issues, and I'm Kemeni Amano. Bye-bye.